So far in our discussion on the breakdown of fatty acids, we only really discussed the breakdown of saturated fatty acids. So these are fatty acids that do not contain any double bonds. But our diet consists of many different types of fatty acids that do contain double bonds. So the next logical question is, how exactly can the cells of our body actually break down fatty acids that do contain one or more double bonds? So this will be the focus of this lecture. Now, fatty acids with double bonds can be broken down into one of two categories. They can either contain an odd number of double bonds, so one, three, five, seven, nine, and so forth, or they can contain an even number of double bonds, so two, four, six, eight, and so forth. So in this lecture, we're going to look at two different cases. We're going to begin by focusing on the odd case, and then we're going to focus on the even case. Now in the odd case, we're going to use palmitoleate as our example. And palmitoleate is a common 16 carbon fatty acid that contains a single double bond between the 9th and 10th position. Now when we ingest the palmitoleate into our body, the palmitoleate ultimately ends up in our liver cell, in our hepatocyte. And once the hepatocyte absorbs the palmitoleate into the cytoplasm, in the cytoplasm, that cell activates that palmitoleate into palmitoleal coenzyme A. And once we have the active form of the palmitoleate, it then can be transported into the matrix of the mitochondrion. Now, once the, palmitoleal, uh, once the palmitoleal coenzyme A is in the matrix of the mitochondria, it then undergoes three cycles of beta oxidation, the same beta oxidation pathway that we discussed in the previous lecture. So once this undergoes three cycles of beta oxidation, it produces two acet uh, three acetyl coenzyme A molecules, and it shortens this 16 carbon molecule into a 10 carbon molecule, this cis delta three in oil coenzyme A molecule. Now, the problem with this molecule is the following. The first enzyme that catalyzes step one of beta oxidation, the acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase, cannot actually act on this molecule. Why? Well, recall that acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase basically generates a double bond between carbon two and carbon three. And the problem with this molecule is we already have a double bond between carbon three and carbon four. And so this enzyme cannot generate a double bond between carbon two and, and carbon three because of the presence of another double bond between carbon three and carbon four. So this molecule is not a substrate for acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase. So how exactly the cells of our body actually prevent this problem, fix this problem? Well, one thing that our cells do is they take this molecule and transform it into an intermediate that can be fed into the beta oxidation pathway. And this enzyme that carries out this process is an isomerase. So it's called cis delta three enol coenzyme A isomerase. And what this does is this enzyme changes the location and the configuration of this double bond. So it takes the double bond and places it onto this position. And that also changes the configuration from cis to trans. So we transform the cis delta three enol coenzyme A into a trans delta two enol coenzyme A. Now this is an important step because now the second enzyme, namely the enol coenzyme A hydratase in the beta oxidation pathway can now act on this molecule and then transform it into ultimately acetyl coenzyme A. And then we can have three more cycles of beta oxidation to basically release and produce all those acetyl coenzyme A molecules. So we see that anytime we ingest 
a fatty acid that contains an odd number of double bonds, this is basically what we're going to find taking place. So we're going to have this isomerase that will transform these cis delta 3 enol coenzyme A molecules into the trans delta 2 enol coenzyme, uh, coenzyme A molecules so that they can be fed into the beta oxidation pathway. Now, what about the case when we have an even number of double bonds in that fatty acid? So, to demonstrate what our cells actually do, let's discuss linoleate. Linoleate is an 18-carbon fatty acid that contains two double bonds. One double bond is between carbon 9 and 10, and the other double bond is between carbon 12 and carbon 13. Now, in the same exact way that we discussed in this particular case where we take the palmitoleate, we activate it in the cytoplasm, we then move it into the mitochondria, the matrix of the mitochondrion, the same thing happens here. We take the linoleate, we activate it, we move it into the matrix of the mitochondria of that hepatocyte, and then, just like in this case, we basically undergo three cycles of beta oxidation to release three acetyl coenzyme A molecules. So we essentially, we, essentially, we essentially shorten this 18 carbon molecule to a 12 carbon molecule to form a cis delta 3 enol coenzyme A. Now notice we basically come to the same exact position as we were in this particular case. So here this acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase cannot act on this molecule because of the presence of a double bond between carbon 3 and carbon 4 as we saw in this case. And so once again, this same isomerase has to act on this molecule to basically change the position and the location, so the position and the configuration of this double bond. So we go from a cis double bond between carbon three and carbon four to a trans double bond between carbon two and carbon three. And so once we form this intermediate, this is a trans delta two enol coenzyme A, as we saw in this particular case. Now, this can basically complete that beta oxidation pathway to basically form a cis delta four enol coenzyme A molecule that now contains only one double bond as can be seen between the carbon four and carbon five. Now, this molecule is a substrate to, uh, to acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase. And once the acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase acts, the, uh, uh, acts on this molecule, it forms a double bond between carbon two and carbon three. And so we form this molecule, which we call the 2,4-diene,ol coenzyme A intermediate. Now, the problem with this molecule is, this molecule is not a substrate molecule to enol coenzyme A hydratase. So, enol coenzyme A hydratase, the second, um, the second enzyme in the beta oxidation pathway, cannot actually act on this molecule. And so once again, we have to use some type of enzyme to basically transform this molecule into a molecule that can ultimately be fed, can be incorporated into the beta oxidation pathway. And the enzyme that carries out this process is known as 2,4-dienol coenzyme A reductase. It basically uses an NADP plus molecule to basically oxidize this intermediate into this molecule at the same time reducing and forming the NADPH. Now, once we form this molecule, a trans delta 3 enol coenzyme A, now an isomerase, this isomerase here, can act on this molecule, basically move that double bond onto this location here. So if the isomerase acts on this molecule, it will form an intermediate that is not shown here, but that intermediate will basically have a double bond between carbon two and carbon three, and then that can be fed into the beta oxidation pathway, and ultimately this entire uh, fatty acid can be broken down into, acyl uh, into acetyl coenzyme A molecules. So we see that 
no matter what type of unsaturated fatty acid that we actually ingest, if it contains either an odd number of double bonds or an even number of double bonds, we see that our cells can use an isomerase or in this case, the combination of an isomerase and a reductase to basically transform and break down those fatty acids into acetyl coenzyme A molecules.